Rather than synthesizing a sound, it's possible to have MIDI music tracks target sound SFX objects that reference audio files as their source. In addition, the sound SFX object can be configured to modify the pitch of the referenced file based on the pitch of the incoming MIDI note message. This effectively provides a way to develop a sampler playback system. Besides the advantage of being able to use real-world sounds with MIDI sequences, it can potentially save a lot of memory as the same audio recordings can be referenced by countless MIDI sequences. To implement a sampler approach, we're going to use the Cube Demo Project and work with the Boss D music segment, which has already been configured with some assets. We see a primary music track referencing an audio file and a random step subtrack with five different MIDI sequence clips already imported. Let's take a listen. You're hearing the first track that has the main accompaniment. If we solo the random music track with the MIDI clips, we'll hear that it's not producing any sound. This is because it's not targeting an object that can render MIDI into sound. For this first part of the implementation, we'll be using the first of these five subtracks. I'll click the Force Usage button and zoom in on it. And let's go a little bit more. The MIDI track and clip names reference an instrument called a suling, a type of bamboo flute from Southeast Asia. Individual recordings of notes being played on a suling at different pitches have been provided as separate audio files. These recordings will serve as the sound source for this MIDI track. These recordings need to be imported into a sound SFX object, which will then later become the target of the MIDI track. To set this up, we'll right-click the Music Work Unit within the Actor Mixer hierarchy. Choose Import Audio Files, Add Audio Files, and then go to the folder with the Suling Samples. We'll first import this one that says Suling C Sharp 5. This indicates the note played by the instrument in this particular recording. Click Open. It will be brought in as a sound SFX object. Now we can see that it's present in the Actor Mixer hierarchy. Now we need to target the Suling C Sharp 5 sound SFX object from the Suling MIDI track. Down in the interactive music hierarchy, select the Boss D Sampler Suling 1 music track. Then in the MIDI tab, click the Override Parent checkbox in the MIDI target area. This will allow us to drag the Suling C Sharp 5 sound SFX object into the target property. Let's scroll back up to see the track we were referencing and then take a listen. We hear the Suling play, but all of the played pitches are identical, even though we can see that the MIDI track contains multiple note positions. This is because when a sound SFX object is targeted by a MIDI track, it interprets each MIDI note on message as a play command. However, by default, the pitch of the MIDI note is ignored, so only the C sharp 5 pitch in the recorded audio file is played. We can fix this by adjusting a property in the MIDI tab of the target sound SFX object. So we'll select it, and then in the note tracking area, click Enable. And let's listen again. Now we hear multiple pitches, while there may be pitch variation, the note pitch you hear may not match the MIDI note pitches contained in the MIDI sequence. In other words, the MIDI sequence may be playing note D3, but it's being heard as F sharp 3. The reason for this is because WISE raises or lowers the pitch of a sound by changing its playback speed. In order for WISE to make the right choice about how much to speed up or slow down, it needs to have a reference as to what the actual pitch of the sound is in the recording it's referencing. This reference is called the root note. The root note must be manually entered into the sound SFX object's property editor. We know the root note for this recording is C-sharp 5 as it was included in the file name, so we'll enter C-sharp 5 for the root note property. And play again. Now the pitches we hear match the sound of those notes recorded in the MIDI sequence.
While the pitch of the suling is now playing properly, every note played references the same audio recording. This can lead to an unnatural feel as all of the nuances of every note played are all the same. Also, when there's a large difference between the incoming MIDI note and the root note in the referenced audio file, the timbre of the sound can begin to sound unrealistic. Sampled instrument sounds work around this by using an approach called multi-sampling. Multi-sampling means that many unique recordings are used to cover a specific range of pitch. Configuring a multi-sampled instrument in WISE is possible as well, and we've already taken the first step to building this type of structure. The overall approach to setting up a multi-sampled instrument in WISE is to create a separate sound SFX object for each audio file that will be used in the multi-sampled instrument. The trick is to make it so that each sound SFX object only responds to MIDI notes that are within the range of notes intended for that single sound. To accomplish this, we'll use the MIDI filtering features available for a sound SFX object. For the Suling Sound SFX object, notice below in the Filters area the properties for key range value. This sets the range of notes that this particular Sound SFX object will respond to. Set the filter's key range properties to say C sharp 5 for the min and F5 for the max value, and play the track. We hear that the first note plays, but the second one no longer does because it's outside of the range that we defined. For the Suling, a variety of recordings have been made with the musician playing specific pitches that can each be brought in as unique sound SFX objects. For each note, we'll need to repeat the overall concept we've just done, but it can become quite tedious to do this when some multi-sampled sounds could consist of hundreds of audio files. Instead of going through this process one by one, we'll speed things up by importing all of the audio files for the Suling into a blend container. Blend containers can play multiple sound SFX objects simultaneously, and they also offer some features to make quick work of setting the filters. We'll start this process from scratch, so we'll go ahead and delete the sound SFX object we just created. Now we'll right-click the Music Work Unit in the Actor Mixer hierarchy, choose Import Audio Files, but this time we'll click the Add Folders button. And then I'm going to navigate to this folder which contains all the samples for the various notes used with the Suling instrument. Notice that by default, the folder in the file structure will be used to create a virtual folder in the Project Explorer. Instead, we want to have the sound SFX objects contained within a blend container. This blend container will later become the MIDI target for the Boss D Sampler Suling music track. You can also see that the audio files will be brought in as sound SFX objects. We'll click the Import button. A Boss D Suling Samples blend container now appears in the Project Explorer. And there are sound SFX objects for each note referenced within. Within a blend container lies a very helpful feature for adjusting the root note and filter properties of the sound SFX objects it contains. It's called the Key Map Editor. To access it, we just need to select the Boss D Suling Samples blend container and confirm that we're on the MIDI tab in the Property Editor. Here we can see the same MIDI settings we saw in the Sound SFX object. For this parent object, we're going to leave the default values just as they are, but to adjust settings of the contained objects, we can click the Key Map Editor button. We see a list of each of the Suling Sound SFX objects contained within. The advantage of the Key Map Editor is that we can see the common MIDI properties we adjusted earlier before for all the individual objects contained within a single view. First, we need to go through the list and override MIDI note tracking in order to enable MIDI note tracking on each of the contained objects. To do this, we can select all the objects first, hold Shift and click on the first and last of the sound SFX objects in the list, then click Override MIDI Note Tracking, which applies to all of those selected, and then click Enable MIDI Note Tracking, which will apply to all selected. Then just click in the background to deselect the objects. The next step is to adjust the MIDI tracking root note and set the key range for each object. The root note is simply the note name documented in the object name. So we'll just adjust the MIDI tracking root note to match the note referenced in the object name. 
Now we need to look at the key range values. If the key ranges between two sound SFX objects overlap, it's possible that one MIDI note could play two audio files. For this reason, we'll set the key range value to the same as the root note and the key range max value should be set to one note below the next object's key range min value. The problem at first is that the list is alphabetized according to the object names, so the note names aren't listed in the same order as they would appear on a keyboard, which can be a bit confusing. We can change that by clicking the column header for the MIDI tracking root note. Now we'll adjust the key range min and the key range max values. Enter the key range max values so they don't overlap one another. For this last note, we'll set the min value to F-sharp 5, but we'll leave the max value at G9. Now, our last step is to reassign the Boss D Suling 1 music track to the Boss D Suling Samples Blend Container. So we'll close the Key Map Editor and select the Boss D Suling 1 music track and drag the Boss D Suling Samples Blend Container to the MIDI Target field. Let's zoom out on the Segment Editor. Turn off the Force Usage button and let's take a listen. Now we hear the notes play, but each now has a distinctive audio file that's being referenced, adding realism and minimizing sonic redundancy. Let's take Solo off and hear it all together. <laughs> 